Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Revolutionary Road, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet, Kathy Bates, and Michael Shannon, directed by Sam Mendes. Now, before I get into this movie, Leo and Kate working with each other again after Titanic? This is gonna be great! I've seen the movie before, but is it what I remembered? Let's get into it. We open at a party in the mid-1950s where Frank Wheeler, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, meets his wife April, played by Kate Winslet, and have a conversation about what they do for work and what has seemed to bring Leo and Kate Winslet back together since Titanic as he sees one of her plays and she's studying to be an actress and she's terrible based on one of the audience members. And Frank bumps into Mr. and Mrs. Givings, played by Richard Easton and Kathy Bates, respectively, as well as their friend Shep and Millie Campbell, played by David Harbour and Catherine Hahn, who want to have drinks with them. But April feels depressed, as it was the bad perform, as as it is with the bad performance. And as they're in the car, and Frank wants to have a pleasant conversation about the night, and they argue until Frank hurts his hand. And these opening scenes are all over the place, but don't get me wrong, it's well made, it's a well made movie for sure, and I credit director Sam Mendes for filming this quite well, but unfortunately, I feel like this is a dysfunctional couple, leading up to a dysfunctional family later on, and honestly, based on the beginning, just wanting, I just wanted them divorced to the point, because half the movie is about, almost about like a, kind of like a sequel to American Beauty, and that is something I don't want to go back to, honestly. Frank goes to work and is greeted in an unkind way by Jack Ordway, played by Dylan Baker. And we move on to Frank and April running with Mrs. Givings, driving by a house they end up buying on a revolutionary road. And he works at... And he work, and he at work trains a young woman named Maureen Grubb, played by an actress whom I had just had recognized to recognize as it was driving me crazy, Zoe Kazan, as she was in The Big Sick, and as well as recently in She Said, which is the biopic about how two reporters got Harvey Weinstein about where he is at today. But he has lunch with her while Mrs. Givings asks April if she and Frank could visit her son John, played by Michael Shannon, before he was General Zod in Man of Steel, and Frank takes Maureen to lunch because it's his birthday, and he turns 30 while he's married to April. And I'm thinking, they're having an affair, and the acting is tremendous, sure. I just don't like the situations this couple goes through, as it's way too melodramatic. Frank tells April he wants to go back to Paris, France, whenever he gets the chance. And unfortunately, my nightmare came to life that I brought up a second ago. That is as I thought Frank and Maureen were having an affair, and guess what? I was right, and I'm not too happy about it. And again, this movie is all over the fucking place. Frank comes home to April all dressed up, as well as their two children, Jennifer and Michael, celebrating his birthday, and the same night, April wants to give Frank a chance to move to Paris, France, as he feels it's not realistic, while he she brings up how miserable his life is, and eventually Frank agrees to go to Paris, and Leo and Kate look miserable in this movie, more than in Titanic, in which Leo didn't want to show up for interviews on, which is a much better movie than this, in my opinion. And the, they might, and they have more chemistry in Titanic than here, as this isn't their best performance to, says together, in my opinion. Next day at work comes, Frank tells his co-workers he's moving to Paris as they have lunch, and make fun of Frank somewhat while April gets a tour guide for Paris and gets home before Frank does and sees his family and they talk about the move to Paris and the editing in this movie is, like I said, all over the fucking place. We go to Shep and Millie's place before Frank and April arrive while their kids are watching the Howdy Doody show and as Frank and April get to their house, they tell Shep and Millie about the move to Paris that will begin in September, and Shep acts awkwardly like an asshole. And they talk about their choice as immature to the point Frank and April make fun of them behind their back and make love, and the actors are not hitting it for me. 
And I don't really like them as a couple either. And I usually like these four actors, David Harbour, Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet, and Katherine Hahn, but they're stuck in a script that I just don't feel engaged with. But I'm going to preview this now. This is kind of a better movie than American Beauty, but not quite as good as Titanic. The Givings come to the house and meet John as this guy is such a douchebag, and Michael Shannon does a good job at playing a douchebag in movies like Man of Steel and The Shape of Water, as he gets a Best Supporting Actor nomination for this performance? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a great performance, but he can do better as, it could be a better douchebag than here. And I'm not really connecting with the character, which is unfortunate in so many levels that I can't stand them in this movie. Frank gets promoted by his boss, Bart, at work. While at home, April telling him he, she's pregnant with another baby, while frustrated with her daughter, and I get the impression she doesn't want the next baby, and guess what? It shows it as it was telegraphed. Frank tells Shep he got a promotion, and he is thinking about it as an opinion, while April wants to get an abortion, while almost without Frank's say, and they once again have a melodramatic conversation that this movie is getting boring. At this point, and I'm past an hour into the movie, and I'm getting ready... And I'm getting really fucking bored with the movie. Frank decides he wants to stay on Revolutionary Road at his job, and April is not pleased about it, and he gets interviewed by Bart. And his co-workers have another lunch, and we immediately go move on to a dinner scene with Shep and Millie, as they're happy they're not moving to Paris, while Frank dances with Millie as she goes to the bathroom and throws up, and their car is stuck with another car, and Frank takes Millie home, and Shep and April stick stick around and talk about what she wanted, but doesn't have a choice but to live with her husband as she dances with Shep and kiss line, and kiss while she hasn't been kissed in a long time, and as he confesses he's in love with April, and this is a boring film about a married couple who almost who argue almost a hell of a lot. The next day comes as April is living with guilt and doesn't act normal as she's ignoring her husband and Frank confesses about his affair with Maureen and asks why he was with her to begin with, which doesn't make any sense with, while she's confessing she doesn't love him and the givings come over for dinner. And John once again acts like a village asshole to the point Frank wants to beat John's ass because of how far this motherfucker goes and that's what I mean by a douche, he's a douchebag from the first scene to the last scene in this movie. And once again, Frank and April have another argument that is so goddamn sentimental. At one point, she laughs because she hates Frank to the point she screams and he wishes April got rid of the baby. And I thought, what the fuck is the point of this movie besides argument after argument? I mean, ugh, Jesus Christ. April runs in the forest while Frank goes after her while she doesn't want words. She wants to think, as she doesn't give a shit about what Frank has to say to her, like how much he didn't mean it. And for two hours straight, this movie is about dysfunctional marriages as well as a dysfunctional family. And I just can't take that kind of bullshit in a movie anymore, or as some books weren't made for the big screen. And this, unfortunately, is one of them. And Richard Yates should have told Hollywood that it's not meant to be in a, in, into a movie. April asks Frank of how he wants his eggs cooked, and he says scrambled, and she had them well as well, some as well. And anyways, they eat breakfast together, and this scene is a well-shot scene from the two characters, as I don't care for them. But the cinematographer, Roger Deakins, does a great job at filming this particular scene before he goes to work. April gets the abortion as she commits suicide at the same time. She calls 911 as Frank is in the hospital waiting for April to get out of there as he thinks she did it herself. And he runs out depressed as she died. And Millie and Shep talk to some people about them as a couple. And Shep doesn't want to talk about them anymore as the Givings and Frank watching watches their kids on the swings. And this climax is too fucking depressing that I feared it coming back to this movie. That this movie was too goddamn depressing. And guess what? 
my nightmare came to life. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 4.5 out of 10. Better than American Beauty, but not as good as Titanic. As Leo and Kate can do better than the characters they get in this movie. As I don't like any of the characters, even Michael Shannon, who performed this his role great, but the character he's playing is, in, in my opinion, a douchebag. And this movie is all over the place to the point it has no plot except for it's a married couple with issues. And who wants to watch a movie that I wonder, unfortunately, not me. The script made this movie melodramatic, which is unfortunate to the point I got frustrated with the movie. And the movie was absolutely fucking boring with their arguments that I can't take it any further. It's not the worst director Sam Mendes made. That's so far American Beauty. But it's unfortunately still not a, a great film as I was bored for half of it. And this is unfortunately a non-recommendation for the reasons I brought up in the review. As you heard me say what my problem with, with this film is. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. And next time I'll be back with Away We Go. And until then, let's not go to Revolutionary Road.